Welcome to the GCN Tech Show. Coming up this week, Garen Thomas is finally going to have to wave goodbye to his iconic glasses. We've got annual stats from Strava, some very bling DMT shoes, and possibly the most bizarre tech fail that I saw at the Cyclocross World Cup at the weekend. Plus, we're going to be going through the hottest bikes of 2022. Hot and spicy bikes. First things first, let's take a look at last week's poll. Let's do it. So last week we were asking if we thought the UCI, UCI sorry, should relax its rules and allow for more technical innovation. I am very pleased to reveal the results. 70% of people said yes, they should relax their um, rules. Hopefully the UCI is watching and, and they see this and take heed. They anyhow, are not watching us. Anyhow, <laughs> to the, the, um, the main talking points, yes. which is the hottest bikes of, of the year. I mean, there's been a lot of fantastic bikes come out. Yeah. So I'm going to go first with one that stuck in my mind, which was the new Scott Foil. Oh, yeah? Yeah, so you saw this at Eurobike, nestled in between all the sausages that were everywhere. Bratwurst. And currywurst. What's Lots the curly sausage called? Don't know. Curly first? Might be. Might be. Um, anyway, onto the bike. Uh, yeah, so it, it's, it's the latest evolution of, of, of the foil aero bike. Yeah. And when you look at the first Scott foil, it's, it's, you really do see how much more aero this one is. Yeah. It's around the cockpit, it's all got a lot slimmer, there's a lot more integration. You can see more pronounced aero features as, as you've got this evolution and the learnings from each successive iteration are then carried forward and then slightly improved upon in key areas. It really, sort of, for me, represents the pinnacle of now what a, a sort of aero bike is. You've even got like the, the rear wheel literally but it almost up against the seat tube, quite yes. literally hugging it. And you can see it's very pronounced, the shaping right behind the front wheel on the fork crown as well, as this is a feature that a lot of bike designers now incorporate. Um, pretty light, 7.22 kilograms in the mm. top of the range build, yeah. Yeah. but exceedingly expensive. It is. So in, in pounds, it's 1,500, yeah. No, 15 now. 15,899 pounds. That's how shocked at the price you were. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, we'd lot. have to film at least two episodes of the GCN Tech Clinic in order to afford one of those. At least? Yeah. Right, and we'd have to make them long bumper edition shows. Right, what about the Colnago then, sneaking in at the end of 2022? Yeah, the, the V4RS has just come out. We've done a first look, so you, if you want to see more information, like check check that out. But it, it's Tade Pogacar's new bike. So yeah. that's big news. Yeah, big news. It weighs roughly the same. It's ever so slightly lighter than the outgoing V3 RS, according to Cole Nargo. Yeah. Um, and it's got all the hallmarks of a, of a sort of modern all-round bike. So a bit aero, lightweight, yeah. disc brakes, all that sort of stuff. Stiffer, more aero? Of course. Of course. Of course. <laughs> right, next on our list. Um, nice looking bike. A couple of other high profile bikes we've seen throughout the year. But the, these Madon. two were a bit controversial. Yeah, they were controversial. Yeah. Trek Madon. And the Bianchi Ultra. Yeah, so yes. these, you know, said to be cutting edge aero bikes, but they definitely divided opinion. I mean, Alex, yeah. right, describes the Madon as looking with that cutout bit at the back on the seat post. When you look at it, I've like, described it a few different ways. I'm it, now concerned as to what one you're going to. Alex described it to me as looking like a genetically deformed Alsatian with a permanently erect tail. Kind of almost the right words, yeah. <laughs> I did say it's like a dog that's walked around with his tail and his, his bum on display all the time. Yeah, yeah. well, there you go. Uh, Bianchi yeah. as well with its with its aero ducts and fins at the, at the side. Which, actually, just jumping back to last week, UCI were hot on that straight away, weren't they? Banned. Yeah, no ducts allowed. So I can't decide if this stuff is really cool or if I perhaps think it's just a little bit of a gimmick. Yeah, mm. and that's the problem. We've not seen any independent testing of of no. these bikes to verify the manufacturer's claims, so you can't. What I will say about the um, Madone though is that having seen one in person, it took me a while to find one. When yeah. I saw one in person, I actually thought oh, it does actually look really, really slick. Yeah. Like the way the handlebar's so narrow and the integrated stem is it's, it's nicely done. I've got no doubt about that bit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's the other end. Yeah. <laughs> um, next on our list, what have we got? 
Uh, I th well, the, the new Canyon Ultimate. Oh, of course, you've got one. I'm you? biased. Yeah, of course you've got one. Go on, but I'm, I've um, had every iteration of of the Canyon Ultimate. That's and, a good claim. Yeah, to have, yeah. Yeah. So I've, you know, it can, it's good to be able to compare them against each other. But yeah. the new one does still feel like a. a the Canyon Ultimate is the geometry and the shape of it. But the um, the crazy thing about that particular bike, especially in the CFR guys, is just how light it is. Yeah. You know, it's, I it's, know how light it is. You beat me by two minutes on oh, that it's hill amazing climb. On the hill climbs, yeah. yeah. But the um, it's how light it is, and that's that's down to the fact that it uses this M40X carbon fiber from Torre, which yeah. Torre, big Japanese manufacturer of carbon fiber, they make loads of different carbon fiber products. No, it's not all the same. So you can get cheaper, lower grade carbon fiber that's that's not as light, not as stiff. With the M40X, it's one of the highest grades of carbon fiber that you can get. It's employed in the Pinarello F, and that's why that's so light yet. Was it said it was bike. used by like the Japanese military or something before? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, and it's there's not a huge amount of it. There are there is some. It's also used in some golf clubs that are really high end as well. Oh, I'm not interested in golf. Yeah. Um, but the um, being so light and and, thick and and stiff and strong, and um, it's got a much higher tensile strength than a lot of other carbon fibers that go into bikes that are pre-preg, they can use less of it. So the wall thickness is often less and the frame's much lighter. I, um, I heard a rumor actually that the thickness in the middle of one of the tubes of the new Canyon Ultimate CFR is comparable to that of a Coke can in some areas. That's how like thin and strong it is. But the key thing with this is that it illustrates that Composites technology is, we've nowhere near explored the end of what's possible. I think composites are going to continue to improve. And although this is something that's in, you know, the top end bikes right now, yeah. it is something that will progress down to more. Well, I think the top end stuff's going to continue to develop further still. Oh, absolutely, yeah. We're going to get much better carbon fiber than what we, we currently have. Um, but, you know, they, they were some of like the biggest sort of headline grabbing bikes yeah. this year. But I think from a technological point of view, there's a, there's a couple of things that we saw this year that I think are far more important okay. than, than, that, than that's tech. Well, on that basis, where do you want to take this next? Well, first up, the, the Ghana Hour record bike. Oh, yeah, I mean, I don't know how we couldn't mention that. Yeah, it's not a mass market product, obviously. No one's buying the Ghana Hour record Not many bike. people are doing the Hour record. No, but the fact that this was a 3D printed bike made from Scalmaloy yeah. is, is, is huge because there's so many benefits to this in terms of you can tune the exact size of the bike with, and you can tune um, particular aerodynamic features like the, the ribbing on yeah, the seat the post ribbed seat tube. To, to, to match the size of the bike and the rider without the need for different moulds, which becomes very expensive. So although yeah. this bike is hugely expensive and it is like almost a, a one-off at the yeah. moment, in theory, it when as this technology develops, and you start upscaling it, yeah. it, it should become a, a, a more cost-effective way of making individual frame sizes yeah. and individual and certain features far more cost-effective than the labor-intensive process of laying up bikes by hand with carbon swatches, which is what's done in, in Asia at the moment. This 3D printing requires far less labor. Well, as you say, it's the molding process, which is one of the most expensive bits. So to have individual molds made, imagine how many different ones you'd have to have for all these little individual sections. Yeah, and, and this technology is continuing to, to advance at a rapid rate and improve. I think it's only a, a matter of time until we start seeing more mass market, like 3D printed uh, bikes and products yeah. and, and parts of bikes. Um, I, I think, yeah, it's, it's absolutely going to happen. Well, talking of 3D printing, it's going to lead us on nicely to Sturdy Bikes. Yeah. Friend of the channel, local yeah. guy as well. Legend. Yeah. Tom Sturdy. I mean, yeah, like, again, not a mass market no. product. Like, Tom can't make huge volumes of bikes. It, he's already in his workshop nearly 24-7. I know. He but, can't do any more. But his uh, 3D printed titanium TT bike, Yeah. I mean, stole the show at, at Bespoke. Um, absolutely beautiful but it shows again what can be achieved like a completely custom geometry frame yeah the integration and finish of like the the sort of in, the bar and stem made out of titanium the Incredible. crank set yeah beautiful 
And again, this is an example of like, this is a man in a shed. Yeah. Like this is what well, he's can got be a new achieved. workshop now. Well, he has. Yeah. He's, he's got a, a fancy shed now. Yeah. But but still, it's it's you know it's not a huge bike company, and they're no. achieving something that is incredible and bespoke. And it's only a matter of time, I think, until we start seeing additive manufacturing. I think if we're going to, in tech terms, 2022 was the year that additive manufacturing, aka 3D printing, finally took off and became relevant. Wow, you heard it first. Yeah. So those are some of the bikes that we've picked out, really just scratching the surface of what we've seen in 2022. Um, so we're kind of really keen to hear everyone else's thoughts on this, yeah. aren't we? Yeah, let us know in the comments section down below, and we'll read out some of the comments next week about what you think have been the hottest bikes. I don't have a favourite bike from this year, but I'm sure everyone will share their thoughts. Hmm. Um, hot tech now, oh, starting yes. with, we've got some really bling shoes. So, Poggy. Yeah. Podgy. Is it Podgy or Poggy? Uh, Tade Pogaccia has got some new DMT shoes customised. They're called Podgies. Yeah. They're limited edition. Uh, only 500 are being made. This is pair number 177. Let's I don't have know. A look. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but the 177 is handwritten on the box, like actually handwritten. Oh, one for me. What do you make of these? These are actually really cool. So these are based on the uh, KRSL, which is DMT's lace-up shoe. Uh, although feedback from Tade Pogaccia mm -hmm. has actually apparently resulted in the upper being even lighter than it even was lighter. before. And they've got a new anatomic sole on them. Um, what do you make of these? Nice, isn't it? With the sort of yellow accents on the I nice really white like shoe. I really like it. Also, they've got uh, Poggy Numbers. or Poggy. Yeah. Um, they've got his, TP. Bra his branding on TP. That's unfortunate for the American audience, isn't it? I don't get the TP joke. They think it means toilet paper. <laughs> that is unfortunate. Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, so, yeah, this I is like it's quite cool. It says 177, one, 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 like, written on the shoe as well. That is really cool. They're really smart, aren't it's they? On the inner, in, it's on the inner edge of the heel cup, so all your friends aren't going to be able to see that. But it's yeah. a good talking point of the cafe. So, uh, just 208 grams for a uh, size, size 42, 42, so pretty light. Yeah. Um, Nice. nice. I like the shoes. fact that it's a one-piece construction on the upper, like real sort of like seamless a sock. design. Yeah. There we go. Put those in the box safe. Are you a size 42? Unfortunately not. Me neither. I'm a uh, 45. Other big thing this week, yeah. talking of Tour de France winner tech. Yeah. End of an era. Ger it is. Geraint Thomas no longer going to be with his Oakleys that he's yeah, so Ineos yeah, have ended their partnership with Oakley, which has been long running, I think 12 years actually. That is a long partnership. Yeah, interesting to see them pairing up with Sun God though, a company that was founded as a Kickstarter campaign. Yeah. Um, I'm intrigued to know if we're going to see a custom Ineos colorway of the glasses. Mm. Mm. And what do you, well, what do you guys think? I've got a pair of, I like Sun Gods, I like Oakleys as well, I wear both. Yeah. Um, but I've got my Sun Gods here. What do you think? Is Geraint going to look better in these or in his um, Oakleys? Oh, I don't know. I think Geraint Thomas might look cooler than you look in them. I don't know. I don't want to seem too. I don't know. I don't want to seem too harsh, though. But you, these are really good. Mm. Yeah. Well, let us know your thoughts. Do you think it's going to be better or worse? Yeah. Um, anyway, next time in Hot Tech, we've got some quick, fast Strava stats for you. So Strava published a report. Um, culminates all of their data from yeah. 2022. Yeah, I like this because this is something that we, we now we're used to. We, you get it at the oh, end of the year. You see all your annual stats, like how much you climbed, how far you rode, how fast you rode. But yeah, this is like not just your individual ones. This There's is a like collective. The, the, the community. The macro stats. Love it. Hit us with some stats. Right, so Liverpool um, saw the biggest increase in the share of cycling activities. That's Liverpool UK. In the UK, where yeah, the, so this is UK based. Where the Beatles are from. <laughs> yeah, and then that was followed by London with an increase of just 9% in London. By contrast, some areas have had a decline in the amount of commutes that have been going on. Bristol? Yeah. Near us. Bristol? Where Cy lives. Uh, where Cy not been uploading his commutes to Clearly start. not, because Bristol's fallen by 19%. Um, that's a big share. Now, interestingly, the share of activities on Strava with an e-bike has increased by 26%. Except for all the people, I think it's even higher than that. Yeah. Everyone that's taken a KOM off me. Not logging it as an e-bike. Clearly was on an e-bike. <laughs> <laughs> that's all it it's could be. It's the only way yeah. someone could take a KOM off me. 
Um, some other interesting stats for you here are to do with riders riding in groups compared to when riding an individual. Mm. So overall, riders in groups, so two or more people, cycled 163% further than when they were solo. And the difference is quite stark between male and female riders because women cyclists who cycled in a group generally cycled 218% further when alone compared to just 158% increase for men. So if you want to ride further in 2023... Ride with women. You're going to increase how much further you're cycling. Well, not just that, just don't ride alone. Oh, yeah. Get some mates. Yeah. Get some friends, that'll really help you out. Um, there's been big changes around the world though. So the UK had the highest percentage increase in athletes compete, completing over 100 mile rides. Go UK! Go UK. I think part of that might be down to you doing all the riding you do. Mm. Um, what are your stats this year so far? Low. Really? Yeah, when we when we can um, generate the data, should we do it in a couple of weeks and share that with everybody? Mm. Yeah. I'm on not as much as last year. Oh no? No. Cut back. Covid got me ill, and I, oh. I got ill. I got I've been ill a couple of times. Lost yeah. a couple of weeks. Um, well, I'm, how far do you reckon you've ridden this year? So far, eighteen thousand kilometres. That is a lot of cycling. <laughs> There's no way I've done anywhere near that. I reckon I was on half of that. Um, anyway, next up in hot tech is the the bizarre fail I mentioned earlier. Now, I don't think we're going to be able to show any footage of this, but the easiest way to watch and see what happened is by using the GCN Plus um, racing footage. Yeah. So you can go back and watch the... Watch um, on demand. Well, yeah, watch the race on demand. But Wout van Aert was cycling past the pit lane on the section of the racetrack. In the World Cup cyclocross. Yeah, in the World Cup cyclocross in Dublin at the weekend. And somehow, like a mechanic's sort of towel or rag that he had hung over the side of the course got like dragged into his rear mech. And it was like the most bizarre thing I've ever seen. One minute he's racing along, next minute he's got like a beach towel hanging out of his back wheel. What I don't understand is why he he because he'd gone past the pits. Oh, uh, so this is this is so why didn't he have to like then complete the lap? So this is an obscure rule. Well, it's not obscure. It's just one of the rules of cyclocross. The only time you're able to travel the incorrect incorrect way around the course is if you haven't passed the pit exit. Even if you're on the section of race course that's next to the pits. So he hadn't passed the exit of the pits, which meant he could double back the length of the pits to then get in. It's a weird technicality, but um, it saved his race. He went on to win, because had he been 20 metres further round, he'd have had to run all the way around the lap. What would have happened if he'd vaulted the wall? Oh, you're not allowed. You've got to go back and in. No. Yeah. He'd probably got disqualified. No. Good job he knows the rules. Yeah. <laughs> Um, also, this week, uh, Zwift Academy has started. Oh, yeah. Can't wait so it started a couple those. of days ago. Yeah. And the final episode is on Saturday. So there's an episode each day. Um, I, I mean, I'm loving it. I, I've got I'm to be honest, I haven't seen any of it. What I'm going to do is save it all up and then watch it straight through. I won't through. spoil it for you then. Oh, yeah, please but don't. But it's really cool to see our mate Il Bandito, yeah. Luca, mm -hmm. who's in the video, video versus Feather. Yeah. Um, that's really cool. He's, he's doing well. And I just love that this is a, a, a thing. I love that it exists, that you've yeah. got this thing whereby people who might not um, come, become professional yeah. cyclists are given this actual genuine opportunity to just show how talented they are and find another route into the sport. I'm and totally with you on that. Like a genuine opportunity and... Because serious talent there. A like, really good um, like support network through it to make sure everyone's doing the right things, going about it the right way. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Well, check it out. <coughs> um, right, on to comments of the week. Comments of the week. I like it. That was good, that it's one. Off the cuff, that one. Yeah, yeah. that's good, yeah. Um, what have we got first? Um, this is under last week's show yeah. from Look In For A Nick. Um, <laughs> okay, here's a product pitch for you for free. Oh, nice, um, We thanks. normally have to pay for them. Yeah. That's nice. Uh, a T-shirt with a cartoonized face of Ollie a bit like the one in some Zwift screens, uh, saying <laughs> the UCI has no jurisdiction here. I would buy it. Maybe um, we should start making t-shirts, like our own ones with little slogans on and stuff. Mm, I've all got the, a few ideas. All the silly That's things that we say in the tech I like, show. I like that one. Right, if we can get this signed on by the powers that be at Megabase, yeah. we'll just make our own t-shirts. I think that would be a good vid if we just <clears> got some really illegal bikes and t-shirts that say you have no jurisdiction here and then just go ride them in the car park around the velodrome in Eigel where the UCI's headquarters are. I've not got that sort of spare time on my hands. It wouldn't be, it wouldn't <laughs> it be, be brilliant. It would be brilliant. 
Um, yeah. Someone else almost also commented. So Felix said, "Could you wear some massive sunglasses like ski goals to make your face more aero?" I think they've been invented, and it's called a visor. Well, wow, Sai wears those things as well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sai, those you know these glasses he wears. I only found this out the other day. The lens in the glasses is actually exactly the same as ones that's in ski goggles. For me, that'd be a too smaller lens for ski goggles. I want a bigger lens for oh, skiing. Okay. I, well, I tell you what would be a good tech show. Yeah. Things that the UCI hasn't yet banned that we that we wish they had. I'm starting with size sunglasses. All right, I'll, 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 I'll I'm not a fan. It. They're too right. big. Um, well, I'm going to save up. I haven't got any off the top of my head. We'll save them. Maybe we'll do a tech show in the new <laughs> year. Yeah. All right. Um, underneath your custom paint video that went out at the weekend, mm. somebody from Julian Allen says, oh boy, Alex is going to be, it, it says a rude word, uh, if part two doesn't show Ollie cleaning off the overspray from the Park Tools work stand. Yeah, there was a lot of comments about the overspray on the Park Tools Right, this is your stand. platform now to beg for forgiveness from me and everybody. And Park Tool. Yeah. Calvin. <laughs> oh, if Calvin if sees Calvin this. Calvin sees oh, this. Calvin. Oh, no. Well, but we've we've lucky here at GCN to, yeah. to be sponsored by Park Tool. We've got several Park Tool work stands. Yeah. So I just took the oldest one, which now has got a re and I've new lick of paint it. on it. It's now <laughs> yeah. the painting stand. Um, so well, if you need to do some painting, yeah, we've got a stand, and you don't need to worry about getting overspray. It's on a it. Ice Effect Park Park Tool stand. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Last comment. So this is underneath our Slow and Winter video that was out the weekend. And I'm in 100% agreement with this comment. It's from yep. Christian. He says, I guess going slow in winter has to do with the unexplained fifth fundamental force in the universe, the one that pulls you closer towards the sofa. That's, I have that problem, basically, in winter. Do you? Yeah. I go to get on my bike, and I just can't resist the forces. I deviate into the lounge. I just keep um, jumping on the turbo. I just can't be bothered going outside <laughs> anymore. Yeah. OK, fair. I think the last two weekends, I've just ridden inside. I've ridden the turbo a lot recently, yeah. actually. Um, right, it's now time for the Bike Vault. It's my favourite part of the show. This is where we pick out bikes that you've uploaded on the GCN app. We judge them to be either nice or super nice. If you want to play along at home, download the GCN app, vote on all the bikes. Um, what we got? The bell, right. The bell. If it's super nice, I ring the bell. So the most super nice bike from last week is, take it away, Ollie. Peter Dot L with his Sato. Oh. Sita. What do you think of that? Is that Strange custom geometry? geometry? Yeah. Is that custom geometry, that one? Yeah, I think it must be. It looks, it looks very squished. It does. It does. It looks like it's got a very short top tube and also a very short stem on it. It's a custom geometry, but that, it, you know... That's cool. That's cool. It's, it's, it's a, you know, that's it's a, part of it. God, I was going to say I'm not sure, but... Are they the ultra wheels on it? I think they are. Oh, they're so nice. Also, I can't see how the bike's been propped up, so I'm going to give them the benefit of that and assume Magic. it's a shadow stand. Magic. I'm looking for one. Well, it's a shadow stand. It's invisible. You can't see it. Yeah, I'll go super, super nice. nice on that. Nice paint job on it. Yeah. Um, so first thing this week is from BC Douglas One New Bike Day BMC SLR Zero One. What do you Ooh. make of this? Nice speed plays on there. Oh, lovely. It's, uh, yeah. Ah, oh, it's a super nice, isn't it? Yeah. Well, well kept lawn and shrubbery in the background little, as well. Is that a very small little solar panel powered light in his garden, sitting in the grass? It's I either it a is. light or, or is it a, a sprinkler device? I don't, I don't know. Could be a sprinkler, actually. Keep the grass looking like that. Yeah. Um, it's a super nice for me, but please be very mindful of not letting your bike fall over and scratching it. Yeah. <laughs> don't crop out the edge of the tyre. I'm so, so close to so not close. making that a nice. Yeah. Um, RJ Barfield with a 1998 Y foil. What is that? Trek. How have I never seen one of these before in my life? I feel like I've not seen one. That's I mean, incredible. I'd love to ride that around the UCI's car park. <laughs> yeah. Just watch them. <clears throat> they wouldn't know what to do. The windows. They wouldn't Just, know what to do. Uh, shaking their book of rules at me. Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> I'd just be like, yeah. Yeah. That's a, I think that's super nice. Vows are nice. It's really up. small. Yeah. Super nice, yeah. Look at that. Easy. Gangster, isn't it? Um, um, Zymec. Zymec, yeah. Orbea Orca OMX 2022. Oh, I do oh, like is, these. That's the same sort of um, 
red that I have on my Orca Aero. It's a nice paint job, that one. Um, not seen one with Coromas on it either before, but that's really cool. I like it. And the new Ultegra. Well, I'm loving it, but it's frustrating me that the chain is in Biggie Middles. Oh, yeah. And I, there's potential that chain's slightly on the short side, if you ask me. Um, I'm, I'm borderline thinking I'm going to go for a nice. Nice. The, the, um, pains me set, I just I would have put good. it on the adjacent wall as well because the sun right behind it there yeah. is casting that annoying shadow. Mm, I'm really sorry about that. MJ Pikey's next with a <laughs> Lapierre Echo DRS 7. Um, first thing, I am a big fan of multicoloured spokes. I don't know if that's an unpopular tech opinion. There's a lot going on here, isn't there? But there is a lot going on. I'll tell you what, he's got the Ultegra power meter as well. What? I didn't even know that existed. No. Well, I knew it existed. I just have never seen one in, in, in real life. No. IRL. Um, I like this. It's a shame that the bike is not matched up with the angle of the camera and the wall. Yeah. We've got a selection of different angles going on here. Yeah. But it's a nice clean wall. It's a nice clean wall, but I've just... Good grouting in there. Isn't, isn't, you know, there's some... There's, there's no, not... no, no, it's not grouting. Well, yeah, it's what... pointing. Yeah, pointing. Yeah. Thanks for, thanks for Builder grouting. speak. Yeah. Real good, builder stuff. Good pointing. <laughs> Um, having just voted the previous bike a nice because it was in biggie mediums or biggie middle. Um, Let's completely just make up the rules as we go and say this is super nice. Super nice because <laughs> you've got different coloured spokes. <laughs> Rob Tef C. Yep. What's he got? He's got a C68. Oh. Uh, a nice bike, but. Oh, jog on. Dreadful. Jog on. Dreadful. No, no. It's not even no. a big rig. Nice. It's in smallsy medium. Oh. Yeah, that's a nice. Oh. We can't do it on this. Ollie's oh, going to no. go into a meltdown. Oh. Isn't it? I mean, if you've what invested, are you at? if you've invested your it's hard a C68, cash, C68 man. Oh. I'm, I'm actually lost words as well. Genuinely. What are you playing at? Mm. Um, improvement needed. Please try again. Actually, what is really funny is I forgot to mention this. I've made a little note here. Mm. Rob. Um, person who uploaded this very kindly uploaded 36 different images to the GCN of the bike of the bike, and that was the one that was in the bike vault. And that was the that was the best one I went. That was the, the bike best vault. one. That was the best one I could pick out. <laughs> like Rob, oh. I'm really sorry, but I think you could do better than that. Yeah, um, we can't dwell on that any longer. I'm going to put the bell away. Um, that draws this week's show to a close. It's been really interesting. It's been great fun. And don't forget to comment in the comment section underneath what was your favourite bike from 2022. Mm. We're out of here. Bye. Ciao.